Oh no, now my nose is running. Now's not a good time, nose. <laughs> hey everyone, so it's been a very long time since I've done my last Q&A video. Literally the last time I did one, I had an extra organ as I filmed it right before I went for my gallbladder removal surgery. So that's fun. Um, I healed well, so that, that's good. And you know, now it's months later. And you know, a lot has happened in that time. I've hit rock bottom and we're, we're slowly crawling back out. And you know, there's been a lot of things releasing and a lot of announcements and movies and TV shows. And just there's, there's been a lot going on. So um, since I thought the questions were probably extremely outdated in the comment section of that video, I asked you guys on Instagram for some questions and I've screenshot a bunch of them. And today we're going to sit and answer them. So no, I didn't forget to answer them on Instagram. I was gonna make an entire video. What are your thoughts on Lego Masters US? Now, I, I've i honestly never watched a single episode. I, I feel like a really fake Lego fan for saying that. I do know a bit about it, like who the judges are. I love the fact, firstly, that there is two of them. If there is one thing that the Australian Lego Masters needs to improve on, it is, we need a second judge. You can't just have one, otherwise it feels kind of biased. I love the fact that they have two judges. Although from everything that I've heard, it's very sort of like drama heavy and like it's not sort of like will they finish the build in time is it gonna keep it together it's more of like drama between the teams themselves and the teams with other teams which not personally a huge fan of. I also have heard that it only goes for an hour, whereas like ours goes for like an hour and a half. So it looks like a great show and there are some very, very talented people on it. But yeah, not for me. I'm not one to go and like actively go and try and watch it. Do you have a favorite brick film? Honestly? Okay, so I feel like the things that come to mind when I first hear this are always, of course, like the forest fire, like Batman animations, as well as the Giotto's 13, like Harry Potter ones. I loved watching both of these so much as a kid. And I even go back and rewatch them quite often. And I feel like one of my favorite forest fire ones has to be the Justice League stop motion animation. I'm pretty sure that one's like not too kid friendly. I remember watching it as a kid and I like turned my on my like iPod touch so that no one would hear like swearing or anything. I felt like so rebellious watching it. And then out of Giotto's 13, it has to be one of the Half-Blood Prince parts. And specifically, I can't remember which one it is. I think it might be like five or six when like Harry Thirst gets to school. That one is definitely one of my favorites as well as his like little Harry Potter and like the Mirror of Erised one that he did a couple of years ago. I just, I love both of them. Those have to be my favorites. Do you plan on making any videos for upgrading Marvel slash other themed sets and minifigs. I 100% do, specifically Marvel in particular, because my two favorite Lego things, if you guys didn't know, are Harry Potter, duh, and Lego Marvel, which last year there just wasn't many good sets, so I didn't buy anything. And then this year they just hit it out. And I am so happy and so in love with it. So I definitely have a lot of plans for one, specifically with Marvel. I'm like doing a Marvel marathon. So like, it's like literally on the forefront of my mind right now. I wanna try to do some custom sets as well as custom figures and like purist figures and even try and do a maybe a Marvel mock, no promises, but I'd love to try and do that. DC is another one I would really love to do. However, because everything DC is making recently seems to be R rated, there's not many sets going around Around. So we'll see, but DC is another one that I would love to do. What is the most overrated Lego Harry Potter set in your opinion? And now this one I feel like is really tough because as a whole, Lego Harry Potter is one of the most consistently good themes out of the entirety of Lego. And I'm very, very lucky and fortunate that that is the case. There's sort of one set that kind of comes to mind because sort of looking back, I feel like I prefer the 2018 or sort of 2020 line of sets rather than the new sets besides the modular function. I do love that. And I feel like one set that is quite overrated is actually the 2021 Chamber of Secrets. Now, I really like that set. I think it is really good, but it does have a lot of areas that I feel like could have been improved upon. And I think people seem to sort of forget that just because of how sort of cool the set looks at a first glance. I feel like the Chamber of Secrets was a bit lacking. It didn't really feel like a chamber. The best part of it was definitely the modular system. I love the fact that we've got a basilisk. It's got some pretty good minifigures as well, but just the build from the outside 
sort of lacking. Same with the chamber. And I feel like it could have been just a bit better as good as that set is. And I feel like for that reason, I have to say it's the most overhyped. Are you excited for Shang-Chi? I really am. I feel like a lot of people aren't. Like literally even Disney themselves doesn't seem to be hyped. Like I'm scrolling on TikTok and like all of the influencers got to go to the Shang-Chi premiere and it looked really good. The reviews as well look amazing. The trailers look really good and admittedly I haven't watched too much of them, but I'm, I'm really hype for this movie. I think it's going to be really good. I just wish Disney would care enough about it. I've seen literally more stuff for the Eternals in like the last two days than I have for Shang-Chi. Literally the, the main actor is doing a lot of the promoting and he's amazing. Love that for him. What retired set is first if you win the lottery? I feel like this changes so much. Like a couple of months ago, actually it was like almost a year ago at this point, I did a video counting down my top 10 and most wanted sets that had retired and I've been incredibly fortunate and incredibly lucky and grateful to have actually gotten the top five of those sets. I've managed to collect them all throughout the year, which is just absolutely amazing. But there is one set on that top 10 list, which I feel like is just so ridiculous ridiculously expensive now in the aftermarket that I don't ever think it's going to be possible and that is the Lego Pirates of the Caribbean Black Pearl. Now I really wanted the Queen Anne's Revenge as a kid and I remember when the Black Pearl came out and it was just incredible but my mum said no to the Queen Anne's Revenge so I really didn't think I was ever going to get the Black Pearl. My best friend actually owns it so I've seen the set in person. It looks gorgeous but these days it's just in too incredibly expensive that I don't think I'll ever be able to just Justify it. Diagonally, as much as that was very expensive, that one had a much closer place in my heart. Unless I'm winning the lottery, I don't think, unfortunately, I'm ever going to get that set. So for that reason, I feel like that's the one I'd go for. Now, this is a question that I've actually gotten asked quite a few times in this Q&A, and that is, did Lego send you the Marvel CMF? Unfortunately not, which is such a shame, but I'm gonna buy the figures anyway. I wanna get a full set. I wanna get quite a few. I'm thinking about buying like a full set from I'm Rick James Bricks. And then maybe if for some reason my luck strikes and I'm able to go and feel through the figures, I'll go hunting for some duplicates that I want. If not, maybe I'll buy two full sets because I do want the multiples of quite a few characters. I'm even tempted to get a full box, but I did that with Harry Potter and I did regret it because it was so expensive. However, my Marvel's got 12 figures, so you only get 36, which is cheaper. And because I want more multiples, it's starting to look like it could be a good idea. So unfortunately, I did miss out on this one, but I still plan on getting the figures as soon as possible. And even though it will probably be like a month or two months late, I will review them for you guys too. Is it better to buy in the Lego stores or department stores? Honestly, the simplest answer to this question is it is better to buy wherever Lego is cheapest. Now for me, usually I don't buy from Lego shop at home very often, mainly because like our Lego shop at home and our Lego stores are separate. So I feel like I've got reward schemes all over the place, which is incredibly frustrating. And unless I really want a set on release day, I'm not gonna buy it from Lego shop at home or the Lego store. And that is purely because it's so much more expensive. The only times I really buy from Lego shop at home is if it's like a Lego exclusive set where there's just, it's not gonna be discounted. If it's not gonna be discounted, I would get it from Lego, get the VIP points, especially if it's double VIP points, that's a really good deal there. Or it's release day because a lot of the stores in Australia don't get sets particularly early. Usually they'll get them like two weeks after release day. So if I want it day one, I'll buy it from Lego. Otherwise, just buy it from where it's cheaper. Save yourself the money. What's the best part about being in LAN? 100%, it just has to be the people that you meet. That has been my absolute favorite part of being in LAN. The amount of people and just communities and channels and content that I've been introduced to because I've seen their name and I've seen their community appear on LAN is incredible. You really get to know people and like meet people's faces and that has been the most rewarding experience. And that's just something that I feel like I probably wouldn't get or really go out to actively find if I wasn't a part of LAN. Of course, getting sent sets super early and being able to unbox them before they've even leaked or I've seen photos, that is incredibly amazing. And I feel like besides the people I'm meeting, that's really the next best part because with the amount of leaks these days, you just don't really get that excitement anymore. So being able to have that is a great thing, but no, 100% it's just being able to meet and talk to all of these different people. I've learned so much about different areas in the LEGO 
community. I've also learned just like so much about people all over the world and just met a lot of people and that is so much fun. What's one of your most expensive mini figs? Now in terms of value that is very very different to the most amount I've spent on a mini fig. So I'll talk about both of them. Actually no let me go get them. So in terms of like resale value on Bricklink I have to get my prized possession of my mystery machine and pull out my good friend Velma Dinkley. <laughs> now there is no doubt that Velma is the most expensive expensive value wise in my collection beating out literally like the 2007 Umbridge and like Snape and like just any of my Harry Potter ones Velma is the most expensive she cost like over a hundred Australian dollars to get a hold of she was only in one set which was the mystery mansion which literally she's the only reason I bought that set and I was very tempted not to do it and just buy the figures off Bricklink when it released but they were still like 20 bucks back then and I just thought I might as well get the entire set and I'm so grateful I did. So she just sits in the mystery machine and she is in like immaculate like new condition because like I never played with this stuff. I literally just put it on display and built it and it's like it's my favorite. This is like my prized possession, my mystery machine. I love it. But the most I've ever spent on a figure was actually beaten recently. So before it was Goofy from the Disney train and I'd spent like 30 Australian in order to get him. Then I recently purchased Vision from like the Infinity War slash Civil War tanker truck breakdown set. But then like literally a week later, I sort of gave in and bought a figure that I never really thought I would own just because of how expensive it was. And that is the Deadpool from the original original 2002 Chopper Showdown set. Now there is one big reason that I decided to get Deadpool and that is that I just don't think that they're ever going to really remake him. It's almost been 10 years and unless they do what they did with the Bugle and just put him in an 18 plus set, I don't think we're going to get Deadpool again because now we've gotten the films, people know how sort of violent and graphic Deadpool is. So I gave in and he just sits out front of the Bugle. I've put him right in front of the sliding doors and that's sort of where he resides. And and I really, really like him. Thoughts on the Lego Eternal sets? I recently actually like went back and looked at the pictures of these and I forgot how cool they were. Like specifically the big two. I love the look of the red mech as much as like I think Lego and like Lego Marvel has a really big mech problem. That one looks incredibly cool. And I also love the design of like the triangular spaceship. Like it looks really good. A lot of the minifigures though seem to have reused faces again, which we know isn't my most favorite thing ever. But like Shang-Chi, I feel like they were taking the safe route and sort of just saving the money on these because they don't know how well the film's going to go. But the builds of the sets themselves look incredible. As much as the minifigures I feel like could have been a bit better, I'm really excited to get them. And it also looks like there's a not yellow version of my hairpiece, which I'm going to swap out on my sig fig if that's the case. Very hyped. What's your favorite video you've done or you're proud of recently or in general? I really like this question because as much as I sort of hide the fact that I post YouTube videos specifically about Lego on the internet, literally if anyone asks me what I do, I just say that I'm a video editor and I just leave it at that. Like I, I don't talk about it, but my channel is something that I'm incredibly proud of and there are select videos that come to mind. If you guys didn't know as well, I sort of have like a greatest hits playlist, which I compare to like ABBA Gold because that album is just a masterpiece and that has sort of most of my favorite videos that I've ever done so there's sort of a link of them but some of the ones that recently pop into my mind are definitely I feel like just my video talking about the Spider-Man sets I feel like that one for what it is it's just literally me ranting about Spider-Man I'm really proud of just the amount of stuff and the edits that I did in that video I really really love as well my Hogwarts icons review I put so much extra effort in and and it paid off and I'm really really proud of just how well that one turned out again just for being a review and even my Lego is an everything one because I feel like that was such like a big and important topic and it's something that I definitely try and think about and implement more in my day-to-day -day life and I'm just more proud of the fact that it impacted so many people and they loved just hearing and thought it was an important message so that really means a lot to me and I'm super super proud of that one. I've really been trying to like put some extra effort in with my editing recently and it just makes me feel a lot more proud of my content and I'm really really happy. Will you do more contests, mocks, custom figs and will you look through all of the entries? 100% I want to do an annual contest around the same time every year and each year I will probably be based on something else. One that I would really like to do is like a green screen 
screen contest. Like I love playing around with green screens. That is something I would really like to do. And of course I'm going to look through all of the entries. Otherwise, it's not a contest. If you don't look through every single entry, how are you supposed to know which one's the best? Like I, I went through everything. It took me a very long time, but I, I loved looking through everything. It was so much fun. When were you first introduced to Harry Potter and was it the books or movies? This is a fun story because I'm pretty sure I was actually one and I watched the first one with my grandpa and you know, I was a very young child and apparently I got terrified. I'm pretty sure it was the Chamber of Secrets that I like first watched. And then as soon as like Dobby came on the screen, I started crying and then my mum switched it off. Um, so yeah, that, that's how. And then years later, I rewatched them all and it was great. For years and years, I would only watch like the first two though, because the third just looked too scary. And then eventually I worked my way through them. And I distinctly remember thinking, wow, these movies just go on forever. Biggest question, how are you doing? Thank you for asking. Quite a lot of people actually asked me how I was doing. I'm doing pretty good recently. I've definitely been lucky and had some like really good days back to back, but still there are just days where I'm just not doing well at all. And I sort of just take a step back and really work on me. And I feel like this is gonna be a battle that continues on for an incredibly long time. And I don't know if I'm ever going to be the same again, which is unfortunate because that's all I want really, but doing a lot better. But now after talking about that, I feel like I'm going to start crying, which is not something I want to do right now. Do you think there will be a new Disney castle released soon? Honestly, I have no idea. I really hope that there is though. I would really love to see Aurora's castle from Disneyland. Admittedly, not my favorite Disneyland castle, but it's the original one. It's been over 60 years now of that Disneyland park as well. So it would be really nice to have it alongside Cinderella's castle. And Lego fans love a good castle. We've got the Hogwarts castle, the Disney castle. Soon we're gonna have Peach's castle, or at least that's rumored to be a thing. And and I just feel like Aurora's castle would be really nice. Whether or not it would be on sale at the same time as the Disney castle, I don't know. And also what you would name it. But that's one that I would really love to see since I danced in a Disneyland parade a couple of years ago with my dance school. It was like a whole big event and you just sort of like danced with all of your friends down Main Street. It was a lot of fun. So I'd love to have the Disneyland castle as sort of a representation of that. Because in my mind, I sort of treat the Disney castle as that, even though it's the wrong part but there you go. Are you gonna get a lighting kit for Hogwarts? I love the look of the lighting kits and I feel like if anything Hogwarts is gonna be the one I'd have to get it for. It just looks incredible but those lighting kits are so expensive for that set because of how big it is so I don't know when but it's on my list of things that I really want to do and one day, fingers crossed, we'll get to do it. What set do you recommend more, the Daily Bugle or Hogwarts Icons or UCS Gunship? Now this is a very interesting one and I feel like straight up it just depends about what you're really into, like what topic, what films, what interest are you most into then? I feel like it comes down to do you care about minifigures? Because the Hogwarts Icons and the Gunship I guess are pretty similar in that you get like sort of like some figures, but it mostly focuses on the build itself. Now the gunship is incredibly large and takes up a lot of space. So if you don't have a lot of space, I'd probably skip the gunship. And as much as I love the Hogwarts icons, to me, I prefer the Daily Bugle. I think it's a better set overall. It's a beautiful display piece because of the fact it's got so many figures that you can pose and just create a scene. And even though it's more expensive than the Hogwarts icons, I, I really think it's worth it. I love the Daily Bugle. And lastly, what else do you collect besides Lego? Now, there are two things that I feel like I collect besides Lego. The first, and this is something that people who attend a lot of my streams would probably recognize, and that is these little travel rings. Now, this is by a company called the Traveler Collective. I saw this advertised on Instagram years ago and I just loved it. And basically it's just a bunch of rings with like different countries and cities engraved into it. So some of the places that I've been, including on this ring, we've got New York, Hawaii, Austria, Spain, England. And I just have it on this little key ring and I haven't got every single country I've been to because like they are quite expensive and I've sort of done two separate orders. And, but I, like, I just, I love this thing. So I collect these travel rings from all the places I've been, not that I can really go anywhere right now. And then the second one is also actually related to travel and that is those like Starbucks mugs that you can like buy in the store of all the different countries. So that's actually a thing that my parents started like years ago. Like we've got tons tons of mugs from all these different places like London, Toronto, Disneyland, Thailand, Berlin, like 
anywhere that my dad has been on a business trip, we have got a Starbucks mug and that's how we've sort of ended up with so many. So then when I turned 18, I really wanted to do it. So I sort of like took over a drawer in our kitchen and started to buy my own of every place I've been. So I've got Tennessee. I don't think I got Alabama or did I get Alabama? I've got Disneyland, Disneyland California Adventure, Paris, London, Thailand, Melbourne. I think I got like Sydney or something like that. But basically I just have a collection of Starbucks mugs from everywhere I've gone. Oh, including the Hollywood Studios Disneyland park. They didn't have Paris Disneyland, which was so annoying because I don't know when I'm next gonna get to go back there. But I've been very fortunate in my life to have traveled a lot and that is something that I just, I love. I love traveling. So yeah, basically besides Lego, everything kind of relates to places I've been. And I guess that's sort of why I like the key ring because unlike the mugs, it takes up a lot less space. So sorry that the lighting was so horrible in this video as the sun set and I'm also sorry that it was so lengthy but I feel like because I haven't done it in such a long time just make it extra special, make it extra long. I honestly don't know when the next one of these is going to be. I might just do another sort of like Instagram questions and like get them from there. Uh, but just in case I don't and I take them from the video, leave your questions in the comments down below or even just tell me what your favorite color is. Just, I don't know. I don't know, write whatever you want. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel down below. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later.